Hey you beautiful people, in this uh, quick video we want to go through how to install XAMPP. So I want you to just head over to uh, Google and type in XAMPP and click on the first link which is www.patchyfriends.org. Click on that and then you head over to download where you'll see that we have Windows, a Linux and an OS X version and we're on Windows so we're gonna click on the Windows icon and it's gonna download uh, hopefully very quickly uh, the XAMPP software to the installer and we're gonna use that to install uh, XAMPP onto your Windows machine and so it's already downloaded and all we have to do now is click on it and it's gonna run and I can close this off for the time being let's see because the package is so big it takes a few seconds to load and uh, just you can just ignore this this is really just because uh, it, it gives you the warning that we have an antivirus running in the background but it doesn't really affect the install so let's continue continue with the install yes and uh, just click OK and now we get to the setup screen just go through to next and here we have the option to install all the different parts of the software and we're going to install everything even though we're not even going to use Tomcat maybe in another video we'll be using that but basically what you get in XAMPP is Apache the actual web server you get the database server which is MySQL and you get an FTP server uh, where you transfer files etc and there's a mail server as well which we're not really going to touch on it also comes with PHP which is bundled so it execute so Apache is going to execute PHP and we'll get into that as we go along but in this video we just focused on installing and at least viewing the web server and we also get PHP my admin which I'll touch on very quickly as well so let's continue with next so it asks you where to install you can install it by the default directory but I am going to install it on my D drive which is a larger drive that I have and it's asking you what language well of course you'll choose your language we're going with English and I don't want to uh, read any more about Bitnami so I'm just gonna unclick that uncheck it and click next next again and here we are we're installing the XAMPP software Okay, now we're finished so now it's asking us if we want to run or start the control panel and yes we do so we'll click finish to keep sure that uh, that checkbox is enabled now as you can see we're running the XAMPP control panel and in here you have the option to start some of the services and we are particularly interested in the Apache service and the MySQL service and if you're going to be administering this remotely you'd want to enable the FileZilla service so there's a few options you can actually check box and click on which service you want and that's gonna run every time you boot up your computer um, in my case I don't really keep those things running in the background so I'm just gonna click on start for Apache and it's going to start and once it turns green it means Apache is running and I'm going to start MySQL which is the database server and here it's going to ask me uh, the firewall settings it's going to ask me what do I want to allow and I'm going to allow both the private and public networks and that way you're not going to be worried about uh, any connectivity issues uh, while testing it out so it's already running congratulations and now uh, I want to show you what happens so I'm gonna open up a browser and we're gonna see what appears when we view our local host so to get to the first page of our web server we usually type 127.0.0.1 and as you can see when I entered it it automatically transferred me to slash dashboard and here we have a nice welcome page that shows us how to do some of the stuff and most particular are the P 
PHP info pages and the PHP my admin page. The PHP info page is going to show us the configuration of PHP. So there's a lot of configuration here, which you don't really have to go through. This is just giving you an idea what's set up on PHP and what's not. And pretty much everything is usually set up. So you don't have to worry about that. And then there's also the PHP my admin page, which allows you to have a look at the database, your database, so your uh, information is stored in here and you can actually administer and create databases etc so we'll go into some detail uh, in the next video on the PHP my admin information but pretty much that means that you have XAMPP installed now the last thing I want to touch on very quickly is that uh, you may want to create a page and so to do that let's head over to the file manager let's create a custom page really quickly Okay, so here we have our file manager and I have installed it in the D drive XAMPP, but the default install is in the C drive XAMPP. So just look in your C drive and look for that folder called XAMPP. If you're on the D drive, look for XAMPP and let's head over there. And inside there, there's a lot of files, but we're looking for HTDOCS docs, HT docs. And there we found it. And here we see that there's already some files in here, but consider this, this is the root folder and this index.php file is actually transferring you to the dashboard. So let's rename the index.php file to something like index old. And if we do that, it means that most likely this is going to disappear. Yeah. So what we see now, is because the index.php file is no longer there. That's a default file that the web server looks for um, and loads that page first. And because it's not there, it's gonna load the listing. So now we can create a new index.php file and we create a new file. And here we could just type like, hello. It doesn't, have, it doesn't even have to be like uh, legit HTML code or PHP code, just save, just save this, right? Okay, so we're gonna save this file. So we're gonna go to file, save as, and we're gonna go back to the HD documents directory, which is in raid, XAMPP, HD docs. And as you can see, it says plain text, but we wanna name this index.php and make sure to have that extension .php or you can use .html but let's go with php because it's we're going to be coding in php and now we saved that php file now that we did that it should appear here it's back here and this is our new file and in our browser if we refresh you should see hello and that's the first index uh that's the first php page that really doesn't even have php in it it just it just has text so I hope that this helps you guys out. Uh, please like and subscribe if this worked out for you. And uh, stay tuned for another uh, video where we'll go into a little bit more about PHP. So thank you so much for viewing. And see you guys again soon.